The Master Key by Anna W. Mills. For untold ages, man has been seeking to find the way into his everlasting existence, and the search is still proceeding. Every effort made by every individual, tribe, and nation has made for progress in a degree, if only in the process of elimination. The race learns not to make the same mistake again. Ages have passed, and looking back, we perceive that the true way has been shown to the world, though apparently overlooked for a time. The true answer has been given to us in the words of the Master. If a man keep my sayings, he shall never see death. By death, Christ meant blindness of the spirit. When he said, let the dead bury the dead, he meant not those disembodied, but those whose eyes and ears were closed to the things of the spiritual world. The enemy of mankind is hatred, fear, isolation, any emotion or thought which tends to diminish the realization of the divine life within. Since keeping his sayings will avail to destroy the destroyer, we logically reason that it will also avail for us in all the minor trials of our daily living as defense, protection, and bounty. The teachings of the Master are therefore as the Emancipation Proclamation to the World of Humanity. Would you be free? Would you be conqueror over the arch enemy and over all enemies? Here then is the way of attainment. Keep my sayings. What are his sayings and of what do they consist? They are legion and are arrayed in every form of word, thought, and deed, known, expressive of infinite goodness. They run the entire gamut of optimism and righteousness that may be found in the words of every great teacher throughout the ages without one thought of fault or failure. His sayings embody a principle of knowledge of which will construct a key into the kingdom of heaven and will eventually destroy that death, which is a name for the culmination of years of doubt, fear, and disappointments in any and all of their phases. My sayings are the word of God to the world. They are set forth by one who, by the knowledge and use of them, mastered himself and all conditions. After testing and proving them, he, being the exponent of love, could keep nothing selfishly for himself alone, and so passed on to us that which he had found to be the defence and saving power for the world. Here is one sentence expressive of his wisdom. All power is given unto me. This power is for us to use, and its use will give us also the key to our kingdom. It alone, if used continuously and faithfully, will open to us the door of life and will gradually give to us power over our bodies and over the affairs of this world. According to our faith and understanding, there will evolve a new consciousness that will equal a rebirth from which comes health of body and the realization of the spiritual heritage of man. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. A new birth, you must be born again 
the master said, not into another world apart from earth, but here and now in this world be born into a perfect state of consciousness that will be reflected in the objective realm as though it were a new birth. Arise, shine, for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. It is indeed risen and the time is ripe. But do we perceive it? And have we done our part? Let us then take this word, all power is given unto me. And in the silence of the soul, hold it in consciousness. Speak it softly to ourselves, as many as twelve times. Then repose in the silence a few minutes. Letting the words and thoughts rest in the mind waiting for an answer. God is that, that never fails and will answer. We must learn to turn the inner ear toward hearing what our Father has to say and is saying to us to the harmony of the within. Then, again, after a moment of waiting and listening, Call upon life, repeating the words, all power is given unto me. Continue to call and wait with the word balanced in the mind for a period of five or ten minutes longer. Resume and lengthen the time as you advance, completely relaxing, asking for the inner light. To gain consciousness of it, we are obliged to still the senses and the mind. Then we come into the realm of the spirit, leaving behind us that outer world where we have existed, basking in the reflected light, entranced and deceived by it into thinking it the realm of reality, whereas it is only as the light of the moon in comparison with that of the sun. The moon is beautiful and casts a light upon the world when the sun is separated from us in our revolution around it. But moonlight is all dependent upon the sun, without which there would be no moonlight, as without the life centre, the senses could not exist nor this external plane upon which we now function. When we attempt to close our eyes, our ears, and even our thoughts from the without and turn to the within, our source, and find the world of reality, all seems at first a blank. We feel that we have nothing upon which to focus. At this period, we have nothing to do except to try and be still and to follow the master's directions. Abide in my words. While we are in this state, we should do all possible to keep on the watch, awake, expectant, and yet not tense. There is one sure promise that has been given to us as we wait in this attitude, asking and seeking. Before they call, I will answer, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Until we have attained a knowledge of this power on which our life is founded, we shall be as one unborn and shall be in a state of unrest as the prodigal son loveless, homeless, and lost to himself. We are to return to our father's house, from whence we have come in a state of unknowing, into individuality and personality, and now, of our own volition, are to return to him, it, the spirit, and be consciously born again into a knowledge of it, so that we may take up our life on the high plane of godliness and be in power 
and at peace. This is our goal. It is before us and is for him that overcometh. Overcome of what, we may ask? And the answer is our own lethargy, doubt, and sense entanglement. There are guideposts along the path of life, pointing us to the way of life. This one. Ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you, is one of them. And about the first one we come to when we begin to hunger and thirst after righteousness, after having starved on husks of the outside plane. This outside plane is what we are striving to bring into conscious, harmonious relation with that other plane where is our source of supply. The union of these two completes our sphere of life. It is wonderful to be told, ask and you shall receive. How quickly the cry goeth forth from each one, give to me, oh, give to me life, health, wealth, love, a knowledge of truth and all else. We have also to learn that one of the conditions related to this asking and receiving is faith and abiding patience. So we have not alone to call once or twice and then fall back and dwell upon our needs and the poverty of our condition. But our call must continue to ring from heart and soul and mind to echo and re-echo as bells set to the music of established praise and cheer, to ring out the old, ring in the new, ring out our disease, ring in health, ring out sadness, hate, loneliness, poverty, and ring in their opposite realities. In other words, to do as the Master said, continue and abide in my words, so shall you know the truth which will make you free.